Hello and welcome back to my studio. It's Lois here from Lois and Morgana Davidson Art and today I'm going to be showing you how I painted this ink and watercolour painting of these trees just at the top of a slight rise in a wild sort of hilly woodland. It looks like there's some older sort of birch style trees on the left and some younger saplings on the right. And just as we are in the UK at the moment, it's late winter, early spring, where uh, the plants are beginning to show a bit of green through the undergrowth with all the weeds and brambles, but the trees have yet to begin to grow their leaves. I've used my homemade stick pens for this. My stick pens are carved from uh, driftwood that I've found on my daily beach walks. I simply collect little sticks that I like the look of, then I sharpen the ends um, to sort of varying degrees of point or sort of like a blunt point. And then I can simply just dip them into my ink. Um, you can, of course, use any sticks for this. You can put sticks into a pencil sharpener and sharpen them that way. You could use the end of a paintbrush, the end of a chopstick, or you could use an ordinary dip pen. The reason I'm using sticks um, or a dip pen for this is that it gives me um, a more interesting and unpredictable range of marks uh, because the ink doesn't flow in the same way as it does um, in a fine liner um, or a fountain pen. It's a bit sporadic, you're dipping in and out of it, you're never quite sure how much ink you've got on the pen and the marks you make, as I say, can be quite unpredictable but that's part of the beauty of this for painting these sort of wild trees. I'm using Winsor & Newton Indian ink. It's waterproof. You can use any ink you like for this, but just make sure it's waterproof if you're going to be painting over the top of it, as I am once it's dry. The first thing I'm going to do is just time-lapse me drawing out my rough tree shapes with a pencil onto my watercolour paper. Now, my watercolour paper is taped to my board with ordinary decorator's masking tape. Um, it's not pre-stretched, it'll buckle a little bit, but then it should flatten out as it dries. I'm using Saunders Waterford cold press watercolour paper and my board is at an angle of about 20 to 30 degrees. I'm trying to be quite rough and loose with my sketch and um, just trying to keep it nice and fresh. And I don't mind if I don't go over all these pencil lines because it, this is just a guide. When I start dipping into the ink, the unpredictable marks made by the stick pens will kind of dictate the way my marks go because I might get some big splodges of ink and slightly uneven marks, but that's part of the enjoyment, the challenge and the kind of unpredictable nature of this method. I've time-lapsed this slightly because it's quite a long process, but um, I'm dipping into my ink with my stick pen and sometimes I'm picking up quite a bit of ink on the end of the pen, but other times I'm trying to make a mark and it isn't really making that. But then at those times I can sort of drag the pen over the bumpy texture of this cold pressed watercolour paper and I can get some sort of dry brush effects with the marks. I can get the much thicker branches. Um, if I get too much or on there or if it's a little bit blobby, I can just dab it off with a tissue. Uh, but don't worry when you're doing this kind of thing about making mistakes. There aren't any mistakes. Remember, this is a wild wood, so it doesn't matter how the branches look or what directions they go in. If you find you make what you think are mistakes, try not to think of that. Just try and think of them as a different sort of mark and try and find a way of incorporating that mark into the tangle of trees. Remember, this is a wild wood. Some of these branches will have been broken in storms. Others are probably deformed by growing sort of against or into the wind, that sort of thing. Maybe animals have come and nibbled off a few branches. Uh, so don't worry if your marks feel a bit wayward to start with. Now you'll notice that because I'm right-handed, I work from left to right so that I don't smudge the wet ink because this Indian ink can take quite a long time to dry, especially where it's fairly thick. If you're left-handed, of course, then start on the right and kind of work backwards towards the left for the same reason.
you can see that I'm beginning to build up a really interesting tangle of branches. And where I dabbed off some really thick ink with the tissue, I then used the tissue to sort of print a bit of the ink um, onto the grasses around where the trees are growing on the left. And I'm going to do that again on the right, but I'm going to try and get these sort of younger, springier saplings in on the right first. Now that I've um, put in most of my branches and established a sort of tree line of sort of tangle of wild grasses below the trees, I'm going to start using the same sort of um, pen strokes to get in a tangle of grasses around the base, coming in over the tape in places, trying to keep it really uneven and fairly random, but trying to use the kind of marks that will suggest a tangle of grasses or brambles, uh, weeds, that sort of thing, old seed heads. So I'm going to be, as you can see, tending my marks in from bottom right towards the middle. And then when I start on the left side, I'll be going from the left up towards the middle. So that's hopefully going to be leading the eye up into the painting. Once I'm happy with the way the line work looks, then it's important to leave it to dry completely. Indian ink is fully waterproof once it's totally dry, but it could um, smudge if it isn't. Once it's completely dry, then I'm going to paint it using the wet in wet technique. So I'm using a large mop brush, it's a size 20 synthetic mop, and I'm wetting the sky, leaving a few dry patches for clouds. I'm going to use ultramarine blue and just paint a nice sort of clear blue sky uh, with the impression of a few clouds around the middle uh, because the way that the branches are drawn to sort of leaning across the middle leads the eye there. So that lovely white area should give us the look of clouds. Ah, you can see a slight smudge of my ink, obviously that very thick part there of that uh, tree trunk has uh, smudged, it wasn't dry. But what I can do is just very carefully lift out some of that grey smudge if I keep an eye on it. Do you see there, pulling that out, so that means that the smudge now becomes almost sort of just a part of a shadow of the clouds. And then using some sap green, Payne's grey and some burnt sienna, I'm going to just put the paint in more or less anywhere onto the ground area because the marks that I've put in with the stick pens were giving me a sort of grassy, brambly, weedy structure. And so I just need to drop in paint sort of almost anywhere, maybe some behind the trees, just to indicate a little bit of sort of distant um, plants that are sort of growing up that have maybe begun to sprout a few spring leaves, that sort of thing. So I'm just really having fun sticking in the paint, wet in wet, and um, just 
working it until it sort of looks fairly balanced to me. Everything's softening and diffusing, wet blending on the page and giving me these really subtle but very, very loose effects. I can just soften a little bit of cloud using a clean, damp brush there. A smaller brush just to add a bit of burnt sienna which again wet blends into everywhere else. I'm just going to see if I can scrape out some damp paint from the trunks but I think it's sort of dry from the sky wash but I think that's fine I think it's um, light enough there we don't want the trunks to be too light. You could of course use masking fluid over them if you prefer and now using my palette knife, I'm scraping through that lovely rich paint to add even more texture um, because I'm scraping back to the white of the paper and that's giving me these lovely highlights or lighter dried uh, weeds and seed heads and brambles, things like that. Just creating a lovely loose impression of this beautiful woodland scene. And I'm quite happy with that for this simple line and wash painting or ink and watercolour painting. I'm pulling off my masking tape and that's going to give me my lovely clean white border and it will help me see the painting as it really is and help me to see it with fresh eyes, almost as if it's in a mount or a mat or a frame. And of course, at this stage, once your paint is completely dry, you can go in and make any adjustments, adding in some more line work if you want, maybe some thinner twigs um, here and there, uh, maybe just adding in a few more grasses. But I'm happy with this as it is. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this really loose um, line and wash painting using homemade stick pens. And I hope you'll give something similar a go. It can be a lot of fun to play and experiment with this method. The line work produces these really lovely dark values, uh, which makes it really simple to actually paint. You don't have to sort of do too much to it. In fact, less definitely is more with paint application for this kind of a scene. Well, I hope you found that useful and that you'll try something similar. Uh, please um, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. It's free to do and it really does help with our reach. And as always, many, many thanks to all our wonderful patrons who support us on Patreon. We really could not run the channel without you. If you'd like to support the channel via Patreon, then please follow either of the links below. I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.